Hello, everybody. This is Alia Jamal, the Love Coach, and we are coming here for another Love Circle. And today, the topic we are talking about is one of very um, honest position. If you're not going to be honest with yourself, uh, it's not going to benefit at all. And this is something I have been through. Uh, this is something where I had to become honest with myself as I learned and understood. And I have walked the path. So the topic is breaking free from codependency or codependent behavior or codependent relationships. Basically, we are talking about codependency that we experience in our life. So generally, when a person is in a codependent behavior, there is something that needs to be shifted within us. And that, that is the reason it requires getting very, very honest with ourselves. So one thing that we are going to do just to start, we are going to take all the judgment that we have against ourselves and we're just going to put it to a side. Because when we work on unconditional self-love, there's not even a one person chance of judgment. Because if judgment comes in, we stop. We try to justify ourselves. So let's put the judgment aside. And let's talk about what is a codependent uh, behavior. So I have, um, I have a lot of notes here. So I'll be just going through that one by one. First, we'll be talking about what it is and how you can see it in your life. And then I'm going to give you four steps how to break free from it. So very easy, nothing complicated. Uh, let's dig in. So codependent behavior is when my happiness is dependent on someone else and someone else's happiness is maybe depending on me. So when I am in a relationship with somebody that we cannot survive on our own. So if you remember uh, in biology, we did study about symbiotic relationship and parasitic relationships. So parasitic relationships were, um, you know, bad for the host. So think of uh, codependent relationship, a uh, symbiotic relationship that has gone bad. So maybe when the two people came together, it was, it was wonderful and everything was good. And then slowly our own behavior started to show up. And that is when it became uh, codependent. And I'm, I'm going to talk more about what you need to see within yourself and also see in another person that takes us to that place, to that very, very dark place. So if you can recognize these things within you, today you get to change it. But also you get to recognize it in someone else. But if you will try to share it with them, there's a chance if they are not open to it. Uh, they might argue back with you. So send them some material uh, after they have agreed to receive information from you or receive help from you. Don't just, you know, share with them uh, whatever you think about them. It's not going to help. So right now, let's just stay focused on ourselves and let's see where we are um, struggling in a codependent relationship or a codependent behavior that we have going on within ourselves. So first, let's look at it. Let's say I am in a codependent, uh, I am experiencing codependent behavior. And I feel like, uh, I'm going to give the example of a relationship because that is where it shows up. Um, so let's say I think that I cannot live without this person. I have to be with this person. I cannot exist without them. When I think I am actually going to die if I leave this person, that's a codependent behavior. So look around in your relationship, which relationship you feel that way, that you can't live without this person. And then your, you know, your logical mind would come and you'd be like, you know what, I think I can live without anyone, to be honest. So let's put that part to a side. That's your conscious mind trying to justify things. Let's stick to the unconscious part of you. The part that feels sadness, even thinking of losing a, a relationship, losing a parent, losing your spouse, losing a child. Let's stick to that because 
codependent behavior can show up um, with our parents. And a lot of parents actually become dependent on their kids emotionally. And that creates a lot of uh, negativity when the child is trying to become more independent. It can happen in your um, intimate relationships. And that is where I'll be more focusing on. That is the experience I have had. And that is the path I have walked and I have seen and I have uh, to a good extent overcome it. Still working on it. It's still work in progress. So when we are in that relationship that I cannot live without this person, that is codependency. I need this person. So how it is from the other person's side, generally this behavior exists when one person is the caretaker and the other person is who's taking advantage. So if I am experienced, oh my God, I can't live without this person, I am the caretaker. And also another word is enabler. And the other person is the one who's taking advantage. Generally, people who attract um, codependent uh, tendency behavior type of people, those are the people who are looking for somebody to take care of them and take responsibility for them. It could be that they have some kind of personality disorder going on. They could also have some kind of addiction problem going on. Now, it, it's not always a guy who's like, you know, the bad one and the woman is the one who's the codependent and she's trying to uh, be the caretaker. It can be the other way around too. There may be the man is the one who's always tending to whatever his wife is going through and she just needs somebody to take care of her. So it can go both ways. Just, just keeping, uh, keep that in mind. So when that kind of behavior exists, uh, one person is always giving and the other person is always receiving, it creates an imbalance. Even though it maybe it started as a good, solid relationship, but as the time went on, as the honeymoon phase passes, one person, I'm just going to use the man in this case, the man realized, okay, you know, she's really good. She's going to take care of everything. I'll make a mess and she'll take care of that too. So that, uh, that, unhealthy behavior from that person keeps getting more and more. And the person who is in the caretaker position, they start just shrinking themselves even smaller and smaller. And they find significance in taking care of somebody. That is the main problem. Whenever we are in a codependent relationship, deep down, we want to feel significant. And the way a woman is programmed any, any part of the world, still happening, any part of the world, one of the ways we are programmed is your value is how much you can serve other people. And your, your spouse is generally the biggest one, and then your kids, and then, you know, rest of the world. That's where you'll see a lot of women, they do so much community work that they are burnt out. I have personally uh, met and had many conversations with women who do so much volunteer work that they burn out from that volunteer work where they are not even getting paid. So we are taught that you have to serve others. That is what your value is. Another uh, aspect here is if as a child, your parents did not nurture nurture you in a healthy way where that emotional maturity happened within you or uh, emotional satisfaction or emotional intimacy was provided for you, you are going to look for validation outside of you. You're going to try to serve other people. You're going to try please other people that maybe that is what can get you, get them to say, oh, how wonderful you are. That is all the groundwork that goes on in, in falling for codependent behavior as an adult, which is all the things I'm talking about are very, very common. Codependent behavior is very common, but it gets labeled as I'm a good wife, I'm a good partner, I'm a God-fearing person, um, I am so loving, I am so generous, I am so kind, I am so giving. All those labels cover what the actual problem is. When we are giving to that level, we are finding significance. So there are a few 
uh, beliefs that a person who's stuck in a codependent behavior, they are struggling with. Those are the limiting beliefs that sit in our unconscious mind and they dictate our behavior. And again, those are the beliefs that we develop between the age of zero to seven. That is how our unconscious mind has been programmed. And that is what we are up against. So let's come back to the adulthood that where we are right now. So what could be those beliefs? Um, so one of the beliefs could be that I care about other people's happiness more than I care about my happiness. One time I saw a five-year-old girl saying that and my heart literally just, just went like this. Oh no, oh no, that is what's in her unconscious mind. We know where it's going to end up as an adult and the kind of things that little child is going to end up attracting in their life. So where in your life you think that other people's happiness is more important than your happiness? Because that is what you're going to take into any relationship you end up with. Um, there are so many codependent uh, friendships, not just uh, spouses. I have seen, I have seen insanely codependent friendships while both parties are thinking, like right in front of me, while both girls thought they are so developed, uh, well aware human, and that's just who they are. But they couldn't even see the codependent behavior that they had going on. So it does require getting very, very honest and being a little bit brutal with yourself in that honesty, but keeping the judgment out so we can shift it all. Um, another uh, belief that they have that I have to work hard in the relationship. Now, just tell me, um, how many of you grew up that it's the woman who makes the house. I have I have seen like you know all the women I have met they have heard some version of it. So that is another way we have been conditioned and programmed that you always have to do more work, and the man is just not going to do more work. You have to do it. It's your responsibility. When things started to fall apart in my marriage, I heard it from. Every single woman that I know of, I heard this sentence, well, it is in your control to fix your marriage. Why are you not doing it? And my answer was like, I have no idea how to do it. Seriously, if I knew how to fix it, I would fix it. So that was the very big thing where I had no idea what was going on. So again, being very honest, keeping that judgment out, when you do see a, another woman struggling where she's working hard in her relationship, we're not talking about like, you know, we're just going to completely go against, uh, completely go on the other side and be like, you know, yeah, just get out of there right now. That's not always the case in every situation. So if you see somebody who's struggling, they're putting more work in the relationship, just, you know, gently, kindly remind them, hey, how about you, you know, take some time to take care of yourself too. You're important too. There's so much power when another woman or another human is telling another human, hey, you matter. Even if you're a complete stranger, there's so much power because in that moment, that person who's struggling with codependent behavior, they don't see themselves that way. So you can be the guiding light. But again, remember to do it in a kind and very compassionate way. Uh, another belief that they have is, I have to give more. They, their identity is a giver. Now here I'm going to pause and going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, the root energy of breast cancer is resentment. And generally that is a resentment towards ourselves. When you are giving, giving, giving on the expense of your own self, basically you're betraying yourself, that energy within you creates problem in this area. That's what creates breast cancer. So one thing I can bet on, you can pick up any obituary for a woman who died because of breast cancer. 
or anyone that you know, I can guarantee you one thing. Everyone can t- say this to you. She was a very giving woman. She always cared about everybody else. She always put others ahead of us. I get a little sad every time I talk about it. Unfortunately, that is what we have been taught that that is our value. That is not our value. That is just part of it. But unfortunately, that becomes our identity. I'm a giver. Let me just give. Yes, you can give always with a balance. Filling yourself up and always giving from the overflow. That is a healthy way of being. But the other one is a codependent way of being. So the next belief that they uh, struggle with is they feel obligated. Again, that goes to a woman is responsible to run the house. She's the one who's responsible to keep the family. So that's why when a woman does go for divorce, she loses all her friends. It happened to me. It happens to so many women. They lose all their friends, most of them, because most of the friendships are not even genuine to begin with. People stop hanging out with them because what they are thinking unconsciously that, you know, she's not a solid woman. She couldn't even keep her home together. So this is what goes on in our society. These are the, the bitter realities that goes on in our society. And we can change them by, by changing the codependent behavior within ourselves and questioning the way we behave and the way we judge other people. So the next time when you see you know, somebody separating and a little voice in your mind said, well, shouldn't have they worked on it a little bit more. Just just remind yourself, wherever that person is, that is exactly where they're supposed to be. And we have no right to get involved or judge anyone at all, including ourselves. So if we are, if I'm going to judge somebody else, that means I'm judging myself. So that should give you a clue into your own psychology, in your own behavior, how you're unconsciously treating yourself. So next time when you feel this obligation, you have to do this, pause and question yourself. Is that really true? Or is that just codependent behavior kicking in because you need somebody else's validation? So it can be for a charity that you work for or volunteer for. Finding that balance is very, very crucial. Okay, so the last one is uh, they, they don't want to abandon the other person. And that is because they have their own abandonment issues. So they don't want to be the bad guy who would like, you know, leave this relationship. Oh boy, did I struggle with that? It took me five years to really come to a conclusion that we can um, leave a relationship in the most beautiful, loving way, and we can nurture it to become more loving and more beautiful. And that's exactly what I did. And that's exactly what the power each and every one of us have. So when we are trying to stay in a relationship, because we don't want the other person to feel like we've left them, we want to keep our words. If we committed, we're going to stay here. Those are all codependent behavior, and those beliefs are the ones that are keeping you there. On the other side of it, so we we talked about the significance. On the other side of it, it's a guilt that we are struggling with. The guilt to look after yourself, uh, the guilt when you would leave a person who is just completely taking advantage of you once you recognize that. Uh, The first step would be recognizing that. And the guilt of, uh, like, you know, this is not the right thing. That's not what my mother should have done. The, that's not what I, I was raised at as. Because when we leave these codependent behaviors behind or we are transforming them, it feels like we are abandoning our own parents who taught us these values. And these values are not healthy to begin with. But in our mind, we are thinking, oh, my God, I'm abandoning how I was raised. So many times I have heard women say, I am so giving, I'm so appreciative, I'm so kind, just like my mom. 
my mom was like that. So the the emotional uh, behavior lineage goes on for seven generations. So if your mom lived like that, you don't have to live like that. You don't have to live on her timeline. You have your own specific timeline. So now let's get into why why should you even try to heal these codependent behavior, codependent issues within yourself. Why? So here's the reason. If you are dependent on another another person to make you feel significant, to make you feel safe, to make you feel happy, you are never going to live your full potential. You're never going to live your purpose. Now you might say, okay, Ali, I don't even care about living my purpose. I'm fine. Wherever I am, I'm fine. Fine, I'm in that complacent place where I don't want to even care about my purpose. This is what's going to happen. As you would get closer to 40 and jump over 40, you're going to start getting very anxious and very depressed. Now, how many women we know who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, they are in relationships that clearly are not for them and they are taking anxiety pills, depression pills, sleeping pills. That is what will happen. We all have the right to live a miserable, as miserable as we want, but we also have the right to live a very happy, healthy life. If you have this tiny voice within you that tells you, you know what, I want to live my full potential. I, I just want to see what is it that I came here to do? What, what is it that I can do? That is the voice you have to follow then. That means you're already waking up to changing, creating a change within yourself. That is the voice that I follow. That voice just got way too louder for me to stay put. So now let's look at how we are going to nurture that voice. Um, uh, One thing I just want to uh, mention. Okay, I'm just going to see if I have covered all of these things. Okay, so three things that are going on when we are in a codependent relationship. First of all, we feel very, very safe in that relationship because that's who we've been. Maybe as a kid, you took care of, like, you know, you were there for your parents and they were, like, you know, uh, abusing you in all different ways. Then maybe you were there for your siblings. Maybe you were there for your friends. And now here you are, uh, you're there for a partner. So your nervous system, yes, your unconscious mind has these beliefs, but your nervous system have very specific chemical release when you are in that emotionally abusive situation. So your nervous system feels that's who you are, that that is what the situation is, and it feels really safe. So even the thought of changing gives you a panic attack. Or it just feels so fearful and so out of this world that how am I going to ever do that? So safety is very important. Safety, familiarity, that's what keeps us stuck in the behaviors that we are. And to be honest, uh, in all honesty, I'm becoming more and more aware of it um, as the time progresses. And I am still healing different parts of me. It's not done yet. But being on the path is what matters. The second thing is significance. When we serve someone, even if the person is not appreciating, at least we can tell ourselves, you know what? I'm doing something so good. God will reward me. If you come from a a structured religious background, um, we we do uh, get raised with this concept that do good to other people, don't seek the reward, and God will reward you. So many women, they stay in unhealthy marriages because they are like, God is going to reward me. So that is is the significance that we get. Okay, I'm not getting it from this person, but God will reward me. That feels pretty significant. The highest power in this universe, the one who created us, is going to reward you. So we stay stuck. But one piece that we forget, God never told us to suffer. 
that is a whole other topic. I can do a whole lecture on that. It triggers a lot of people because we have idealized suffering, um, especially in terms of religion so much that when we hear, okay, what, wait a minute, God doesn't want me to suffer. He wants me to live my happiest, healthiest, wealthiest life. Okay, what, there's something wrong with the picture. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole right now. It could be a completely different topic, but for, for the time being, just understand that is where the significance is coming from. And that is not what God wants for you. And the third thing is the guilt. The guilt to be somebody different that you know yourself to be. Now, guilt has been programmed within our nervous system from a very young age to control and manipulate us by people who had no idea that that's what they are doing because they carried it from their parents. So we're not going to sit here and blame our parents that, oh my God, my parents taught me guilt. How could they? Um, didn't they know how unhealthy it is for my nervous system? They have no idea. They got manipulated way worse than we got manipulated by them. Um, it is getting a little bit better with every generation because of the awareness that we have or the time and age we are living in. So guilt is there to control you. And it's the, the control is there so you feel safe. And the truth is there's no safety. Anything can happen at any point in your life. You're never safe. The true safety is your divinity, that in your divine essence, you're always complete, you're always whole, you're always safe. So these are the three strings that pull you and keep you in this codependent behavior. Um, what were they? Uh, guilt, uh, significance, and I already forgot the third one. And it's okay. It'll, it'll come back to me. So how we are going to change it, how we are going to step out of being the enabler, being the extra, extra caretaker, ignoring our own self and find ourselves, make ourselves feel significant, how we are going to move beyond the guilt that we experience and the, how we can create that significance within ourselves. How are we going to do all that? I'm going to teach you some very, very easy to do uh, things that you can do regular basis. Uh, give yourself 30 days. Practice them at least for 30 days. When you see the change, you'll be convinced to keep doing it every single day. So the first step is if you have recognized from hearing whatever you have heard so far that, yes, you do have codependent tendencies going on within you, you are being the enabler, you are uh, being the person who have hard time leaving, uh, you are the overgiver. First, make a decision that you do want to learn who you are if you're not this person. We human are programmable. We are the highest creation uh, that we know of, that has been created. We are so powerful that you can keep rediscovering yourself as much as you want. So there is another version of you that exists right now, right here, energetically. And you can change what you think, how you behave, what you say, how you act, all of that you can change and you can become that person and jump on your own timeline. But you have to make a decision. If you don't make a decision, nothing else matters. So sit with yourself and really ponder, okay, is that something I really want to do? Once you have made that decision that, okay, this is what I really, really want to do. I want to grow out of this behavior and into something else that I can become that you might have no idea right now. You might be just like, okay, if I can only stop uh, feeling this way, uh, the skill that I'm feeling, if I can just come out of that, that will be enough. So the second thing you're going to do, you're going to interrupt the behavior that you are um, exhibiting every single day. What that, what that interruption is going to do, it's going to start changing the physical brain, the neural pathways that we have. So this is how it's going to look like. Let's say 
you um, do everything for your spouse, every single thing. I'm, do, I'm just going to take an example of a spouse. And you do know that person is fully taking advantage of you. They don't show up. You're the only person showing up. Stop doing those things. If you cannot stop completely because you're afraid there would be, um, you know, unhealthy kind of arguments, do half of the things. Don't do half of the things. If you are that overgiving mom who's like cooking for everybody and not for yourself, start making something that you love, that you enjoy. First sit, have breakfast, and then think about other people. I made this little switch in, in my routine um, and it, it made a huge difference. So after my son, I, I realized I was so giving to in my marriage and also towards my child that sometime I'll just forget to eat. Um, I'll forget to make breakfast. I'll just eat leftover, whatever kids food leftover is. And of course, that's not that's not what a 30 plus year old person should be eating. So I made a switch. I started going to the kitchen early and I started cooking what I wanted to eat. Maybe I wanted a smoothie. Maybe I wanted juice. Maybe I wanted just something else. And I'll sit down and eat that. And then I'll make breakfast for everybody else. It did multiple things. First of all, it showed me, like it changed my neural pathways. Second, it showed me I am that important. If you cannot fill up your sig significance cup, you are not going to be able to get out of these behaviors. Is the significance that keeps you locked in because you are getting validation in an in a unconscious way that, oh, I'm such a good person because I'm a giver. So whatever behavior you can detect right now where you are showing up as a codependent person, stop doing it. Do the opposite. Or we'll just add something completely new. If you do something for everybody else, if you buy gifts for everybody else, start buying first gift for yourself. Right now at this point, whenever holiday comes, first I order stuff for myself and then I order it for my son. First I think what I am giving to myself, then I think of what I'm giving to my little one. It, it has created a huge shift in how significant I feel all by myself. And also it helps us not looking for validation from other people. Our safety is not dependent on them. Uh, they have the right to reject us and it's not going to activate a flight and fright response within us. Just today, over social media, somebody wrote a spiel about me, didn't even care, answered them in the kindest, compassionate way, supported them with, with their view, moved on way back in the day would have taken me a week. It would just keep going on in my head. That's what happens when you have built significance within yourself because you are trusting yourself more. You know that if somebody rejects you, you'll still be okay. And that is a powerful skill to have in life. So second is you're going to interrupt your behavior by acting in a different way. The next one is you're going to feel Fill that uh, the you're going to fulfill the need to feel significance for yourself, and I have two suggestions for you. One is praising yourself. Most likely, if you're in a codependent relationship, nobody's praising you. So here's something I'll I'll suggest: stand in front of the mirror every single day and say, "I love you," and say your name. Uh, one thing that I have adopted, whenever I pass by a mirror, I have to look in there and say, I love you, Alia. So it could be that I'm outside in a restaurant in a bathroom. I'm maybe just passing by a mirror wall in the mall. I am going to look in there in my eyes and I'm going to say, I love you. And start celebrating little things. Maybe today you clean the house, say, good job, good job, you finished it. Like I am doing this all the time. Last night I, I needed to uh, finish something. There was kind of a deadline I put on myself. I was very tired. I am proud of myself. I stayed up, finished it. 
After that, I went, good job, good job. Our unconscious mind does not know that if you're do if it's you doing it or someone else doing it, it just wants validation. So you can fill that cup all by yourself. Another thing you can do, you can do very, very small things for yourself. So start giving yourself tiny gifts. Maybe get your favorite candy if that's what you want. Get flowers for yourself. Take a take a bubble bath if that is that is your thing. Do something special for yourself every single day. What I did special for myself today, I went for a one hour walk. Even though I'm fasting and, you know, it's, uh, I'm going to be run out of my juices um, since I am walking midday, but my body was craving for it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to give it to you. In that moment, recognizing I'm doing something for myself makes me feel significant. The more significant you feel, the easier it is to come out of these uh, beliefs that you have to carry the burden for the whole world. No, you only have to carry the burden for yourself. Uh, The very last thing is more of a thought to keep in your mind. And that thought is you are complete. You're not broken. There's nothing missing in you. It's not that there's something wrong with you. That's why this person is taking advantage of you. You have just been programmed the wrong program. And you can change it anytime. But in your spiritual essence, as a soul, you're perfect, you're complete, you're well-deserving. So repeating in your mind over and over, I am complete. I am complete. I am enough. I am worthy. Whatever is your version of feeling special, feeling whole, you can say that. I personally prefer I'm complete because it, it, it kind of gives me a visualization of a pie, that I'm a complete pie. No slice is missing. I don't need to fight with anybody for that slice. I'm complete and I am whole. Uh, it comes from the pie chart. That is the visualization I have. I really enjoy that. So I'm just going to recap. Um, The codependent behavior exists within ourselves where we become the enabler and somebody else is taking advantage of us. And we do it because we've been conditioned with very specific beliefs from a very young age. We stay in the situation because it feels uh, safe. It feels significant. And also we feel guilty leaving it. Oh, I remember all three this time. We feel guilty leaving it. So we stay stuck in there. And so many people actually die that way, which is a very uh, unhealthy, sad way to leave this uh, one life that we have been blessed with. So you can take small measures, starting by making the decision that you want to live as a different version of yourself. And then you're going to interrupt the behavior that you have already recognized. Okay, that's where, you know what, I I am overdoing it because of these beliefs. And then the third thing you can do, you can start filling up your own cup of significance, praising yourself, doing wonderful things for yourself. And then the last one is keeping in mind that you're always complete. Now, your mind is going to try to overcomplicate this. Change is easy. It's always simple because you're going back to your nature. Nature is very simple. Nature is not very complicated. But your mind is going to try to make it so complicated that, oh my God, how can you get over uh, this codependent behavior that you have been there for like this many decades just by doing these little things? Your mind is going to try to do that to you. Don't listen to it. Just practice these steps and you will see a massive shift in how you feel inside of you. That is more important. And if at any point you feel like, okay, you have outgrown the relationship wherever you are, and that is not the reality you want, you can always exit. You can always find a a new friend. You can always um, find a new partner as well, if that is the situation in your case. And if uh, I just want to share it. If these behavior exist within your family, so sometimes it's not that easy to 
cut our blood ties. And I never, um, you know, preach that either. I always preach about more compassionate and kind understanding uh, coming from a place of unconditional self-love and then being able to love other people. But if you detect that you are in a codependent behavior within your family, maybe one person is always taking advantage, one sibling is always taking advantage of another one, stop giving and tell them, hey, I am just focusing on myself for now and that's what I'll be doing. They, they might not like it, but at least it's not that you're completely cutting them off. Have that conversation very honestly. We don't have to uh, burn bridges just to nurture ourselves. We can do it from a place of unconditional love for ourselves and for other people. So I hope you found this conversation uh, enlightening and you do understand what is going on within you and how you can change it with so much ease. And if you uh, feel like that this is the journey you want to take deeper and you want to have a conversation with me, reach out to me if you're watching this video randomly somewhere on YouTube. Just Google Alia the Love Coach and you'll be able to find me. I'm right here for you. And this is what my sole purpose is to help you find the real authentic you within yourself. So I am going to stop.